Welcome to the Pre-5K Coach Presentation. The 5K is open to the public and we want lots of participants. Please hang up the 5K posters at your school and spread the word that our 5K is open to everyone. If you know people do not plan to participate in the 5K, ask them to volunteer. All volunteers should sign up online on the GOTRSTL website. Girls and coaches, including practice partner coaches and junior coaches, are already registered for the 5K. You'll pick up bibs for those individuals at the office with your fun box, and the girls will each get a goodie bag. If your team and your coaches, they will also get a goodie bag. Coaches and parents will be emailed our virtual race bag that the general public participants will also receive. General running buddies. We can't make it mandatory for every girl to have an adult with her, but we highly encourage it. First of all, for safety purposes. It's a crowded race and we will be downtown. Second of all, it's really meaningful for the girls and the adults. Coaches should run with their team if they are able, especially with girls who may not have a parent or relative participate with them. If girls are similarly paced, it's fine to have a couple of girls run with one coach. If you are having trouble getting enough running buddies for girls, please let our office know and we may be able to help place someone with your team. Parents or general running buddies, register online on the GOTRSTL website. Registration and pickup. The adult 5K costs $25 and the child 5K is $15. The fee will increase on November 5th up to $30 for adults, and the day of the 5K registration will be $35, so we encourage you to register early. Online registration doesn't close until the morning of the 5K, so someone could register for the 5K on their computer at home when they wake up on the morning of the 5K and pick up their bib and shirt when they arrive at the 5K. The registration system does use dynamic bib assignment, so runners won't be assigned a number until they come to pick up their bib and shirt, whether that is at a packet pickup location or on race morning. If a person has registered online, they will show up to packet pickup or on race morning, and a volunteer will assign them a bib on the spot. People will also be able to register for the race at a kiosk, both at packet pickup and on race morning. To avoid crowds and time issues on the morning of the 5K, we highly encourage parents and general 5K participants to pick up their packets during packet pickup before the 5K and to register prior to the morning of the 5K. The four locations to pick up your packet are at all four Big River running locations, and that will be on the Thursday and Friday before the 5K, November 10th and 11th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can also register for the 5K there. If parents or coaches are picking up 5K bibs for multiple people, they must have a list of names for each person they're picking up for. Because the bibs aren't assigned yet, they aren't grouped by school, and the volunteers at Packup Pickup will not know who from your school has registered. The good news is that all of the people you're picking up for don't have to select the same pickup location because you can pick up bibs or t-shirts at any of the four Big River running packet pickup locations. We frequently get questions asking if race registrations can be transferred and they cannot be transferred. We also do not allow people to run in our race without registering. It's a safety and liability issue. Each race participant needs to sign a waiver individually. We also get questions asking if we offer refunds if someone is no longer able to participate. We do not give refunds for race registrations. We consider them a donation. The Girls on the Run St. Louis 5K go for the gold. So what does this 5K theme mean to you and your team? It's completely optional. You do not need to do anything theme related for the day of the 5K. We know that some teams will want to accessorize based on the theme and that is fine as well. The only word of caution we give is to make sure any accessories you come up with are safe to run in. Safety is our first priority. If your girls want to run in face paint, please do not let them paint above their eyes. Once they start running, the sweat could lead to face paint running into the girl's eyes and ruining the 5K experience for them. We have included Happy Hairspray in the box you will receive when you pick up your 5K bibs for girls and coaches. 
We ask coaches to bring the spray cans to the 5K on race morning and decorate the girls' hair. We'll still have a happy hair station set up in Race Village as well. Remember that your girls will have a great time at the 5K regardless of whether you choose to accessorize or not. Do not feel pressured. Meet your team at your school sign. There will be barricades along the street and your school sign will be attached to the barricades when you arrive. They will be in alphabetical order from A to Z. Please do not take your sign. We do reuse these for future seasons. You can also use your school area as a regathering place after the 5K. When the 5K begins, you will line up behind your school sign and go until the next school sign. Try to flow towards the middle of the street. That's where there will be more room. Here's a look at our course map. You can also find a course map on our website. The course starts at Market and 14th Street. You'll continue down Market until you make a right on Compton, where Harris Stowe University and Chaffetz Arena are located. Then you'll make a right on Olive, where there's the water station. You'll take a right on 18th Street and finally a left on Chestnut to the finish. The finish is at Chestnut and 15th Street. We will have one water station on the 5K course, which will be located on Olive Street. Remind your girls to move through the water station and not just stop and stand there. One water station is plenty for a 5K, so this is a reminder that during your practice 5K, you shouldn't practice multiple water stops, just one. There is a slight incline in the 5K course, so try to prepare your girls for that as well. Here's a look at our 5K timeline for November 12th. You can also find this on our website if you'd like to share with parents. A few things of note that we suggest all, all girls on the run and heart and soul participants arrive at 7.15 a.m. At 8.10 a.m., all 5K runners should be lined up with their teams at their school sign. And 8.30 is the start of the 5K. We recommend that each girl has an adult to run or walk the 5K with her. There are a lot of people downtown on race day, so it can be intimidating for the girls if they don't have someone there to support them individually. We highly encourage you to visit Coach's Corner under the 5K and End of Season tab. There you will find the Who's Running or Walking with Your Girl form. Use that to find out which girls on your team may need a running buddy on race day. You can also start a conversation with parents about transportation. The expectation is that parents or guardians find a way to get their girl to the race. If you utilize the Who's Running or With Your girl, girl form, you may be able to buddy up girls that are having difficulty finding a running buddy or transportation to the race. All parents received an electronic copy of the grown-up guides before the start of the season. You may want to call attention to it again because there is a 5K training plan that they can use to prepare for the 5K. That is also available on our website. And it's extremely important to talk about this now as the girls are already training for the 5K. Uh, parents or guardians or running buddies that are running with the girls need to want, would want to make sure they're training for the 5K as well. Keep in mind that the GOTR 5K has an extremely high rate of first-time 5K participants. They may need a bit more explanation and guidance, and they may not understand how many people will be at this race downtown. You can always feel free to direct them to our office so we can answer any questions about the 5K. We, of course, encourage carpooling. The Metrolink is a great option. Get off at the Civic Center stop by Scott Trade Center. Race Village is just one block away. Two westbound highway exits will be closed from 6.30 to 10 a.m. Those exits are 38B and 39A, both Market Street exits. Cars and buses can drop off runners with an adult behind Soldiers Memorial on Pine Street. Pine is one way, so you must enter from Tucker Boulevard. If you are riding a bus to the race, we ask that the bus driver drop your team off at the designated drop-off area and park a few blocks away from Race Village so the bus does not occupy multiple parking spots near Race Village. Most bus drivers are used to dropping off and then going somewhere else to park. We'll have a designated bus parking lot at Tucker and St. Charles. Just make sure the kids, and you, get everything you might need off the bus when you're dropped off. Several parking lots will be open, 
and parking lot attendants may be charging a $5 fee to park. Plan for time to get there early so you can find a spot and walk to Race Village. Please keep in mind that if the parking meter states that it is permit parking only, you will get a ticket. The City of St. Louis does charge for metered parking on Saturdays, so paying $5 to park in a lot will probably be the best option. Handicapped parking will also be available on market between 13th and Tucker. We will run rain or shine, but may delay the start of the race if necessary, up to one hour if there's severe weather like lightning. We will try to post information on our website and on Facebook that morning if the weather looks threatening. In the event that we must cancel the race due to severe weather, it is considered an act of God and we will be in your envelopes are the race numbers for each girl and coach on your team. The timing chips are the little white strips on the back. You don't have to do anything. Just leave them there and don't take them off. The other thing to remember is not to wrinkle them. So don't fold them or crinkle the number or timing chip. There are two schools of thought on the race bibs. You can give them out early and hope that the girls remember to bring them to the 5K, or you can hold on to the bibs and give them out on race morning. The only downside to this is if a girl shows up late and can't find the team. Our registration volunteers tell us that many parents come to the registration area on race morning looking for their daughter's number. So if you can remind parents that you will have the girls' bibs in School Village, that would be helpful. The girls should wear their number pinned to the front of their shirt. This serves as the backup timing mechanism and it's helpful to the photographer. It's important that it shows as runners come across the finish line. Safety pins should also be included in your envelope with the bibs. Look to make sure we've got everyone. If for some reason we're missing a girl, please let us know as soon as possible. Also, if you have a number for a girl who's not in the program or is not coming on race day, please try and return it to us so we can reuse it. Safety is our number one priority for the race. The entire race village and course will be closed to traffic and no one will be able to park on the race course or in the village. We've hired dozens of off-duty police officers and have a third-party security company that will be ensuring that Race Village and the course are safe. We will have people at every single intersection throughout the entire course. Even though the streets are much wider, which will be safer for runners in terms of people not getting as tripped up, we still do not want bikes, dogs, or strollers on the race course. Please let your parents know this and keep reminding them. It's not that we don't like babies and dogs, it's just that it's dangerous to dogs on leashes and strollers. If we see anyone with a dog or a stroller, we will tell them to move to the absolute back of the race. And if they're running with a girl, the girl will have to start at the back with them. We also highly discourage the use of personal music players. Running music free helps to make the race safer and allows you to really take in the atmosphere of the race. This is also something we want you to enforce at practice. All runners much, must register for the 5K. 5K registrations cannot be transferred, and a runner should not wear a bib issued to someone else. Where should girls go if they get separated? Where should parents go if they can't find their child? We always tell parents that if they can't find their daughter, they should first check the dance area with the DJ before they panic. The other thing we'll tell parents and girls is that they should go to the info tent if they are lost. A person from the information booth will be in charge of facilitating lost parents and kids. We try to avoid having our announcer only handling lost children announcements, but if he does make an announcement, he will tell people to go to the info tent. All coaches and girls should wear their gold program t-shirts and dress for the weather. After the 5K, each team should take time to celebrate the girls on the run season and the girls. A couple of must-haves to include at your end-of-season celebration are individual recognition for each girl, a slideshow or some form of picture sharing, and invite parents and guardians. Some nice-to-haves include decorations, snacks, music, and examples of the lessons. Always remember to kiss. Keep it simple, sweetheart. The end-of-season celebration does not have to cost a lot of money or any at all. You don't have to have food and decorations. It's about the spirit of Girls on the Run and honoring each girl. We can't wait to see you at the 5K on November 12th. If you have any questions at all, please call our office or contact your program coordinator.